Last year for T-Stop Gear, we reviewed the new Miki 35 and 12mm cinema lenses. And now for our first review of 2020, we're going to take a look at the new Miki 50mm T2.2 cinema lens. If you've already seen our reviews for the 12 and the 35mm, you'll know we talked at length about the build quality and the cinema features of these lenses. I won't go over that again in this video, but I will put links to the reviews for the 12 and the 35 in the description below. One thing I will say, however, is that like the 35mm, this lens comes not only in Micro Four Thirds, but also in Sony E-mount and Fuji X-mount, giving full Super 35 coverage. Like the 35, the focus breathing on this lens is excellent. You can do very long, smooth focus pulls with virtually no visible breathing. The bokeh is milky, especially at wide apertures, giving great separation. Chromatic aberration of this lens is very well controlled, in line with the other lenses in the Miki range. Even when shooting areas of high contrast with harsh backlight, fringing is kept to a minimum, in all but the most extreme conditions. Flaring on this lens is very well controlled, similar to the other lenses in the Miki range. However, I would say that the 50, like the 35, does need a matte box to control some of the more extreme veiled flares. The lens is especially susceptible to light sources at the edge of frame, and these flares can drop the overall contrast of the image. Most of the footage filmed during the early evening was shot wide open at T2.2. The images shot wide open are slightly softer, but very attractive and usable. When you stop the lens down to T2.8, the image sharpens up considerably. And by the time you stop down to 5.6, the lens is very sharp with improved contrast. The 50mm, like the 35, is slightly longer than the 12, the 16 and the 25mm. But as before with the 35, the focus and aperture gears line up perfectly, meaning that during a quick lens swap, you won't need to adjust the position of your follow focus. You might, however, need to readjust the position of your matte box. The 50mm is a great telephoto lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera. The equivalent field of view on a full frame camera would be about 100mm, and on Super 35, around a 62. This means you can shoot great portrait shots with a lot of separation and some very interesting bokeh. But being a 50mm, however, this lens has much better close focusing than either its Super 35 or full frame equivalent focal lengths. In some cases, you can almost create miniature tilt shift style photography which can give a magical quality to even the most mundane of locations. If you've already bought into the Miki range of cinema lenses and have your wide angles covered with the 12, 16 and 25, you're going to be looking for a lens which gives you some much needed additional reach. You now have options available with either the 35 or the 50mm. I can see both lenses appealing especially to documentary makers and filmmakers shooting interviews and talking heads. Of the two lenses, I would say the 50mm is probably my favourite, as the slightly longer reach and narrower field of view allows you to create some very unique and beautiful shots.